Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and this video is about Comet stacking in Pixinsight. So it's not terribly hard to do, but there are a number of steps involved and I'm going to walk you through and show you how I do it. This is how I Comet stack. Uh, it's not the only way to Comet stack, but this way works fairly well actually I find and uh, you might find that as well. So you can give it a try. You might need to tweak it a little bit depending on um, if there's what's in your field of view. Maybe there's a galaxy in your field of view with the Comet or a globular cluster like Comet. Comet Leonard was uh, near M3. You might have to do some tweaking with the process, but overall it does work very nicely. So we're going to have a look at how that's done. Now, Comet Leonard obviously is getting some buzz right now because it's in our skies. People are taking images of it. I've been completely clouded out here, unfortunately, for weeks, so I've missed out on the action. It's not really looking great near future for the forecast, but my buddy Tyler Bowman over at Explorer Scientific, he was nice enough to lend me the data that he had acquired on Comet Leonard so that I could process it, but I was also able to do this tutorial for you guys. So uh, two thumbs up for uh, Tyler there for letting me use his data, really appreciate that. Okay, let's get over to Picton site and uh, have a quick look at how this is all done. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is calibrate uh, a line and stack the Comet data. Now we have to do two separate stacks, two separate integrations. We have to do one for the stars to align on the stars and we have to do one that aligns on the comet. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to script, batch pre-processing, weighted batch pre-processing. We're gonna use this script to create, to calibrate a line and stack our star image, our, our star stack we'll call it. And what that involves is you're going to load your light frames in under the lights tab. You're going to load your flat frames in. You're going to load your dark frames. And if you're using flat darks, you're going to load those in as well under the darks tab. Or if you're not using flat darks, you can load bias frames. If you're using bias frames, you don't need flat darks. If you have flat darks, you don't need bias frames. Just keep that in mind. So... I'm not going to show you this whole process. I have another video which discusses and shows how to use the weighted batch preprocessing script. But simple enough, you load your light frames, you load your flats, and you load your dark frames. And if you're using one shot color, you're going to want to go to the calibration tab. Just click once on your light frames here. And you're going to want to make sure that CFA images is, is uh, enabled. And you can leave the bare mosaic pattern set to auto, or you can choose a specific pattern for your camera. The bare method, you can leave at VNG. If you're using monochrome data, so you've shot separate R, G, and B channels and luminance for the comet, then you wouldn't have CFA images enabled because it's not one shot color data. Either way though, you will get a calibrated, aligned and stacked image. So make sure under lights that you have image registration enabled. So we apply it. I'm not going to generate drizzle data for this. You can if you want, but I'm not going to. Image integration, we want that enabled. You can leave the registration reference image at auto. It should be able to select the most appropriate reference image for aligning. And you want to provide an output directory to store all these files. Once that's done, you can click run and the weighted batch preprocessing script will calibrate, align, and stack your comet data. So let's see the result of that. Okay, so the weighted batch pre-processing has completed. We can click done and we can exit. Now what that gave us is a stacked light frame 
and it's been aligned based on the stars. So what we want to do is have a look at that file. Just do an auto stretch on it. And that is our image of the stars aligned. And we're going to take the stars from this image and integrate them into our comet stack image, which we still have to produce. So let's call this one star stack. And we'll just put it up in the corner here for now. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use our calibrated and debared files that were created by the weighted batch preprocessing script. We're going to we're going to comet align those images. So we go to process. We go to image registration and we go to comet alignment. Now I've already loaded them in. These are the light frames that were calibrated. They have a C and they were debared. They have a D. So these are calibrated and debared light frames. But we want to stack the comet in this case. We're not wanting to stack the stars. So this is where the comet alignment tool comes in. If you're looking for that directory, I'll just highlight it here real quick. So under comet Leonard, my directory I called comet Leonard, I created a WBPP folder for weighted batch preprocessing. Inside that is where all the files from the weighted batch preprocessing script have been placed. I simply go to the debared folder and my light frames are here. These are the calibrated and debared light frames. These are the ones that I have imported into the Comet alignment tool. So you're going to do the same. Import those files. Then what you want to do is double click on the first file, the first frame, and it's going to open it up and we can auto stretch it so we can see what we're looking at. There's the Comet there. So what we want to do is we want to tell the Comet alignment tool that this is where the comet is located in this image. So we do that by simply left clicking on top of the comet's head. Just like that. And it drops a green circle, two green circles. So now for the first image, the comet alignment tool knows where the comet is located. The next thing we want to do is go to the very last image, double click it as well. We'll auto stretch. And we're going to zoom in and we're also going to once again tell the comet alignment tool where the comet is located in the image by clicking on it. So now we've got our first image and our last image marked for the comet's position. So now the comet alignment tool knows how to align all of these images so that it's stacked on the comet and not the stars. So all we're going to do is we're going to select an output folder which I've already named one and I called it aligned comet and that's for aligned comet images. You can name it whatever you wish and we simply click the apply global button. Okay, and the comment alignment tool completed registering all of the images. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to close off the comment alignment tool. We can close these two images here. And if we open up our directory, we'll go to the Comet Leonard folder, aligned Comet folder where we stored these images. And we can now see that we've got our aligned images in this folder. And we know that they're Comet aligned because they've got the CA added to them. So now we want to stack these. So we go to process, image integration, image integration. We open that tool. We're going to add our files. So we go to the 
folder where the comet aligned images are. We're going to select all of them and bring them into the image integration tool. We're going to leave the combination at average. Normalization is additive with scaling. And we can do some pixel rejection. We can choose Windsorized Sigma clipping or any other that you wish. I personally prefer Windsorized Sigma clipping. And when that is done, all you have to do is click Apply Global. And PixInsight will stack all of those comet aligned images into one. Okay, and the image integration has completed. If we just close these two files there, we can do an auto stretch and we now have our comet aligned stack. So we can call this comet stack. All right, so now we've got our comet stack image and we've got our star stack. So now we need to add the stars into the comet image. Now, you'll be surprised at how much the stars actually cover up when we're looking at the background here and we see all of these imperfections. The stars are really gonna hide a lot of that, but we can also do some processing to eliminate it as well. So next we're going to want to get the stars from our star stack image into our comet stack image. But there's a few things that we have to do before we actually uh, do that. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to crop the image. So we're going to go to process, geometry, dynamic crop, and we're simply going to crop the image how we like. Let's just say something like that. I'm going to apply that to my star stack. And then I'm going to click the green check mark to apply it to my comet stack image. Okay. The next thing that we want to do now that we've done the cropping of the two images is we want to do a dynamic background extraction to both images. So let's go to dynamic background extraction. So background modelization, dynamic background extraction. I'm going to click on one of the images here. We'll use the comet stack image to start. For the tolerance, I like to set it to two. And shadow relaxation, I like to set to six. Sample generation, I usually use uh, larger sample boxes. So I'm going to put 100 and I'll just make five samples per row right now. And I'll click generate. And I want to make sure that the sample boxes are not over any part of the comet. And if we wanted to, we could add in a few more for good measure, just like that. Maybe we'll put one there and we'll add one there, maybe one there. All right, that's gonna give us a good result. Under target image correction, we select subtraction and I'm gonna discard the background model and replace the target image. Before I apply this though, I'm going to just click and hold on the blue triangle, drag it off onto the workspace so I have a duplicate of the dynamic background extraction tool as I have it set currently. And I'm going to apply it to the comet stack image. Just like that. I'll close it. And then I'll reset my auto stretch and the dynamic background extraction is applied to the comet stack image and i can simply double click my process icon here and as you can see everything is where all the sample boxes were before but 
we'll probably want to make some adjustments. So we'll do that and we'll apply the background extraction to this image as well. So with that complete, we'll just do an auto stretch here. All right, so we've got the dynamic background extraction applied to the comet stack and we've got it applied to the star stack image. So now let's color balance these two images. And you can color balance, you can use color calibration, uh, the color calibration tool, or you can use photometric color calibration. Uh, however you like to calibrate, I'm gonna do it the lazy way and I'm going to go to the auto color script. And the auto color script will just background neutralize and it will color balance for me just by click of a mouse. Okay, so that finished color balancing the comet stacked image and we're simply going to repeat that for the star stack image. Okay, great, so that's done. The last thing that we want to do before we add the, before we create our star mask and add the stars into the comet stacked image is we want to do a linear fit between the two files, between the two images so that the comet stack background is the same as the star stack background. The reason for that is if we didn't do that and we just added the stars in, you would have black uh, ringing around the stars and we don't want that. So simple enough to do, simply go to process, all processes, and we go to linear fit, select the star stack image, because we want to apply that background to our comet stack background. So we simply do that by grabbing the blue triangle, dropping it onto the Comet Stack image, and Linear Fit will do its job. And there it is completed. Just auto stretch again. I'm gonna close the Linear Fit tool now. We don't need it anymore. We are now ready to create a star mask in order to insert the stars into the Comet Stack image. Now you can create a star mask however you like to create a star mask, whatever works well for you. You can use the star mask tool or I'm going to use the multi-scale linear transform tool to create a star mask and I'll show you how that's done. A little nifty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract the lightness from the star stack this is going to become our star mask. And what I want to do is stretch this image. So I'm going to go and do it the lazy way, easy processing suite, soft stretch. And we'll just click run. There it is, completed. I can now apply my multi-scale linear transform settings to this image and it will do that. Now we still want to refine this star mask. So we're going to close the multi-scale linear transform tool. We don't need it anymore. We're going to go up to process all processes. We're going to go to binarize and we're simply, I'm just going to reset the tool and we're going to open up the real time preview. And this is what it does. If we move the slider to the left, we can start getting some of the more fainter small stars, but we can also eliminate the any of the, the comet that remains in our star mask. We don't want that. So if we notice right here, we're starting to get some of the comet appearing. So we don't want that. So we're just gonna back off a little bit, just a tad more, just like that. Okay, so now we've got a nice star mask. So we're gonna click apply. We're going to close our real-time preview and we have our star mask. So the only thing that we want to do now is we just want to take some of the uh, harsh edge off the stars. And we do that by going to process, uh, convolution, and we could actually make this four and apply that and you'll see the difference. So what it does is it just blurs the stars slightly. So now they're not so harsh looking. The edges on them are a little softer. 
Okay. We have our star mask. Let's call it star mask. All right. We're going to just park it over here in the corner. One more step before we add our stars. We are just going to stretch these images. Now, again, you can do it the lazy way and use the easy processing suite to stretch. Or you can do a manual stretch using the histogram transformation tool, or you can use the screen transfer function to do your auto stretch, or to do your stretch, I should say. So we're gonna take it from a linear to a non-linear state. Now I'm going to do a manual stretch. I'll show you how that's done. You go to image, sorry, you go to intensity transformations and you go to histogram transformation. We're gonna reset the tool and we're gonna click the track view. So we're tracking whatever it is that we are, that we have selected. So in this case, we have the comet stack selected and I'm gonna turn on real time preview so I can see the adjustments in real time Gonna grab the middle slider and just move it over to the left, just over to the, just to where the curve starts to go up. Click apply, click reset, and we're just gonna repeat this a few times just to stretch our image. I'm gonna move the black point down just like that. Maybe take it a tad more, move the middle slider a little more too, just like that. There we go, that's looking pretty good. All right, so the comet stack image is stretched. We now wanna do the same to the star stack image. So I'm gonna reset this histogram transformation tool. I'm gonna enable the real-time preview again, and I'm going to just repeat what I did. And what I'm really focusing on here is the stars. I'm not worried about the comet. Just something like that. Okay, so now we've got our star stack image stretched and we have our comet image stretched. We can now take the star mask that we created and apply it to the comet stack image. I'm just going to turn on the preview of the mask so we can see that it is applied, but you'll notice that the only thing that is going to be allowed through when we apply the star stack to it to the comet stack image is the stars themselves. The rest of it has all been masked out. The red is all masked out. All right, so let's just turn off the preview of the mask. It's still enabled. And let's add our stars into the image. What I'm gonna do is use a little pixel math, really simple to do. It's gonna be this equation here. We'll just retype it so we're saying the target, which our target will be the comet stack image. And we want to add, if I can get the plus there, we want to add the star stack image to our target, which is the comet stack image. Really simple to do. We don't have to change anything else, leave everything else at the default. And all you need to do is click apply or drag the blue triangle onto the comet stack image. And there we have our stars added to the comet image. We can turn off the mask. We don't need it anymore. And we can further process this. We can do some more noise reduction. We can do some color enhancement. We can even do some curves to make the comet pop a little more. Let's uh, go to the intensity transformations and we'll go to curves transformation, reset, track view, open the real time preview. We'll maybe drop the black point ever so slightly 
and we'll raise it here just to brighten up that comet. There we go. Getting some nice, nice comet appearing there. Fantastic. Let me just minimize this out of the way. And we could create a mask if we wanted to, let's say a range mask. And we could work on the comet colors a bit more. We could intensify them. Let's uh, just blur this. I'm just going to blur it right out. There we go. And we can apply this range mask so that we are just focusing on the comet. And we could go to process, intensity transformations, color saturation, and open the real time preview. And we can increase the color saturation as you can see there. I'm just giving it a boost. Nice little boost of color saturation. Make the green look a little more green. So that's just a quick run through in processing. You can, of course, apply your normal workflow to processing a comet image just like you would process a nebula or galaxy image. Okay, so that is how you can comet stack in PixInsight. Now, if you found this video helpful and you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. I uh, would appreciate that. And don't forget to comment below. Let me know if you're going to try this technique or you're using a different technique to comet stack. Uh, would be interested to know what everyone's doing. And uh, Visible Dark is now over 10,000 subscribers, which is really incredible. I'm really blown away, and I thank you very much for all the support that you guys have given me over the uh, last few years that I've been doing this. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing and commenting, liking, all that. It all helps the channel grow, and I really appreciate it. Okay, thanks very much for tuning in, everyone. Really appreciate it, and we will see you again real soon. So for now, clear skies.